morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank God for the privilege, the honor, the ability to gather together to worship and glorify his holy name. We're grateful that you've joined us today in our virtual worship experience, live from our cyber sanctuary. We are grateful this morning that God has blessed us to see another Sunday morning. And we're here worshiping uh, from our family to your family, wherever you are, wherever God has so graced you to be. You ought to be thankful. That he allowed you to see another day. Amen. This is the year, the season of Thanksgiving. As we'll be celebrating that holiday uh, next week or this coming week, we are grateful and thankful to God. Even though this has been a trying, difficult, tumultuous, and perilous year, the fact that we are here on this Sunday gives us a reason to say thank you. Let us not ever forget that we always have a reason to be thankful to God. Amen. Yes, times are difficult. Yes, things are uncertain. Yes, we have suffered some loss in this season, but God is still good. Amen. And when we look at our lives through the lens of God's grace and his mercy, our only proper response is to say thank you. Amen. We may not have all we think we need. We may not have all that we want. We may not have done all that we wanted to do. But the fact that God allowed you to take your next breath hmm. means that he's still good. Amen. And so today we're going to celebrate the goodness of God as we continue our sermon series. We have been talking about the promises of Jesus Christ. We've talked about the promise of eternal life. We've talked about the promise of his presence. We've talked about the promise of his power. And this morning, we're going to talk about the promise of true freedom. But before we begin and jump into God's word, let's go to God in prayer this morning as a church family. Wherever you are, lift your hearts and your minds above your circumstance and let's pray to the Lord our God. Lord God, how excellent is your holy name. Yes. You are Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. You are the total God in all of your sovereignty and in all of your superiority. Lord, we are your created beings who lift our hearts, our voices, and our hands in reverence submission, and surrender to the Lord our God, the only true and living God. There is no other God but you. Mm. So, Lord, we submit ourselves to you today. We sing hallelujah to you, God. We say that you are worthy to be praised yes. because you are the great I am. You are the savior of our souls, the redeemer of our lives, the lifter of our heads, the calmer of our soul. Lord, you are the awesome God, the only true and living God, and you are worthy of our praise. Yes. Lord, we pray this morning that even now you would forgive our sins. Yes, Lord. Because, Lord, we are all guilty of sin because you said all have sinned and fallen short of your glory. We all have an inheritance and innate sin nature. None of us are good enough on our own. Yes. So, Lord, this morning we repent. We, we turn from our wicked ways and we turn to the Savior who has forgiven all of our sin. We ask, God, that you would wash us, cleanse us from all unrighteousness, that you would wash us clean and Present us as acceptable, not because of our righteousness, but because of the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for all the miracles, all the blessings. We thank you for every open door and every closed door. We thank you for every opportunity to worship and to praise you. We thank you for meeting all of our needs yes, according Lord. to your riches and glory. We thank you for purpose 
and promise and power yes. and provision and providence. Lord, we thank you for yes, every good and perfect gift. Because if it had not been for you, oh God, yes. we know we would not be where we are. So Lord, we are grateful this morning. Mm. And we pray for this nation. Yes. We pray for this world, oh God, because we are still in the overflow and in the throes of a global pandemic. Mm. Man has no answer. We are all scratching our heads, wondering how we are going to make it through this. Lord, people are losing lives. Mm. Families are being destroyed. Businesses are losing. People are losing income and yes. livelihoods. The whole entire world is crumbling because of an invisible virus. But Lord, we believe. By faith, you're going to hold it all together. Yes. Lord, we believe that you are able and capable of healing, delivering, and rescuing. Yes. Lord, we believe that all things are possible with the Lord our God. We believe that by your stripes we have been healed. Yes. So, Lord, we lift up this world and we lift up this nation. We lift up, uh, God, our hurts, our pains, and our anxieties. We lift up political unrest and civil disturbance. We lift up racial and economic and financial and, 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 and classism. We lift up all of these things, oh God, that are not pleasing unto you. Recognize that you are the author and the finisher of our faith. Yes. That you will do what no other power can do. And that even today, you are delivering, you are saving, and you are redeeming. Mm -hmm. So Lord, we pray over this time in your word, we pray that as we read and study your word, that you, oh God, will get the glory. That someone, some life, some, some man, some woman, some boy, some girl will be transformed. Not by my words, but by your words. That a heart will be fixed. A home will be brought back together. A wayward child will come home. Someone who's lost will see Jesus Christ for the very first time. Yes. Father, we pray that you will go forth. That you will break the bonds that Satan has over your people. Mm -hmm. That we may truly experience true freedom today. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Let the church say, Amen. 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 God bless you and God keep you. All right. Do me a favor. Turn in your Bibles to the book of John. John chapter 8. John chapter 8. The lesson today will come from a very familiar passage of scripture today. John chapter 8, beginning at verse number 31. John chapter 8, beginning at verse number 31. The reading from the New King James Version of the Bible, these words come from the pages of the Bible. And then Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants, and have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? Then Jesus answered, Most assuredly I say to you, Whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. This morning, I want to talk for a few minutes about the promise of true freedom. The promise of true freedom. On September 22nd, 1862, then-President Abraham Lincoln issued a presidential proclamation and executive order that was called the Emancipation Proclamation. This proclamation stated that on the first day of 1863, all persons held as slaves would be declared free. 
This proclamation supposedly changed the federal legal status of over 3.5 million black people who were constrained to slave plantations. Mm. However, even though this was a federal mandate, there were many southern states who ignored this proclamation and maintained an oppressive hold over the African American populace. And it was not until June 19, 1865, that slaves in Texas got the news that they had been free. Mm -hmm. In 1870, the 15th Amendment to the Constitution was ratified, guaranteeing that the right to vote could not be denied based on race, color, or previous condition of servitude. And yet states and local governments instituted laws and poll tax and literacy tests. They promoted violence and threatened death and sanctioned lynchings to keep black people from voting. Hmm. It wasn't until 1965 that the Voters' Rights Act was signed to prevent the systemic and legal barriers put in place to prevent black people from voting. Uh -huh. It wasn't until 1964 that the Civil Rights Act was signed that supposedly banned legal segregation in public places and ended discrimination in the workplace and in hiring processes. All of these legislations and many more like them were promises made to the African American community that never really delivered what they promised. Yes. We are still fighting in this nation for the promises made but were failed to be kept. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said America has failed to hear that the promises of freedom and justice have not been met. Huh. As we study these promises of Jesus Christ, there, there is a stark contrast in his promises and the promises of man. Yes. It highlights how woefully inconsistent and unreliable the promises of man are in comparison to the promises of God. Yes. Even when we have the best intentions, hmm. there are so many things that are beyond our control that can cause us to break and not keep our promises. Mm. But God is not like man. He is sovereign and there is nothing outside of his own will that can stop him from keeping his promises. Huh. Numbers chapter 23 verse 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said and will he not do? Or has he spoken and will he not make it good? God is the sovereign God who always keeps his promises no matter what. Yes. In this portion of John chapter 8, Jesus promises the reader true freedom. John chapter 8 begins with the story of a woman caught in adultery. They brought this woman to Jesus, telling Jesus that she should be stoned because she was caught in the very act of adultery. But after Jesus dispelled all her accusers, he offered her true freedom by saying, I do not condemn you. Go and sin no more. After this, Jesus was forced to defend his own deity by offering the witness of the Father to validate who he is. John chapter 8, verse 18, Jesus said, I am the one who bears witness of myself, and the Father who sent me bears witness of me. Then Jesus predicted his death and his manner of death and said that all things that he did was in agreement and alignment with the Father in heaven. John chapter 8 verse 29 says, And he who sent me is with me. The Father has, <clears throat> excuse me, has not left me alone, for I always do those things that please him. And it is here in the text that, that the Bible says that many of the Jews who were listening to Jesus begin to believe him. 
John chapter 8, verse 31, Jesus then begins to speak to those believing Jews. He said, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. They, they were in the opening stages of a relationship with Jesus Christ. They, they, their interest had been piqued. They, they started leaning towards Jesus, but believing was just the beginning. Because they believed Jesus now, but the question was, would they stick with Jesus for the duration? Jesus said then, to be real disciples, you must abide in my word, and when you abide in my word, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's here that Jesus revealed what real freedom is. Real freedom, true freedom, is not the empty promises of man. It is not material or physical or financial. It is not humanistic wisdom. It is not worldly conjecture. True freedom is not a thing. It's a person. True freedom it is not generated on earth. It came down from heaven because true freedom is the person of Jesus Christ. And it's here in the flow of the text that we comprehend what the promise of of true freedom is really about. And when we experience true freedom that is Jesus Christ, we can never go back to the bondage of sin again. I yes. want to say that again. Once you have experienced the true freedom that is Jesus Christ, we are compelled to never return to the bondage of sin again. And so we want to just walk through the text and tell this story about what it means to have true freedom. First of all, the promise of true freedom requires a connection to God's word. The promise of true freedom requires a connection to God's word. John chapter 8 verse 31 and 32 says, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Discipleship is more than coming to church or participating in church activities. Hmm. All of those things are important, and these things should not be neglected. But that is not the hallmark of true discipleship. Jesus said to be a real disciple... And to experience true freedom, you must abide in my word. This, this concept of, of abide is, is uh, prevalent in the writings of John. In John chapter 15, verse 4, uh, John said, Jesus said, Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. John 15, 7 says, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done. John chapter 15, verse 10 says, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. And just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. In John chapter, 1 John chapter 2, verse 28 says that 1 John chapter 2, 28 says, And now, little children, abide in him, that when he appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. You and I have to abide in the word of God to experience true freedom. To abide in the word means to be faithful to the teaching of God's word. It means to remain connected and rooted in the truth that is declared in God's word. We cannot experience or embrace true freedom if we are not connected to the word that makes us free. Hmm. Remember the case of the slaves in Texas. They didn't know they were free 
until they heard the word that declared that they were free. They were still living in slavery yes. until they got the word that said that they were no longer slaves. And you and I will be enslaved until we gain a, a healthy relationship with the word that sets us free. Hmm. It is our healthy, continuing, strengthening connection to God's word that constantly reminds us that we are free from the bondage of sin. Yes. It's God's word that tells you that you are greater than the temptation that is coming against you. It's God's word that reminds you that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. It is God's word yes. that reminds you that all things work yes. together for the good of them who love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. It's God's word that reminds you I can do all yes. things through Christ that strengthens me. It's the connection to the word that yes. reminds you that you are free indeed. Yes. How else would we know we were free if the word didn't tell us we were free? How, how would we know that we were saved if the word didn't tell us we were saved? How would we know how to live and give and serve and love if the word didn't tell us? Because true freedom is not obtained by our intellectual acumen. It's obtained by the revelation of truth found in God's word. Yes. The promise of freedom requires a connection to God's word. But then the promise of freedom is realized when we admit our own bondage. Hmm. The promise is realized when we admit <coughs> our own bondage. John F. Hart mentions here that, that the text changed and Jesus' attention changed from the group of Jews who believe in Jesus to the larger group of Jews who oppose Jesus. When Jesus said the truth shall, shall make you free, there was a group of Jews who answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. Hmm. Now this is a very deceptive and erroneous statement because Israel mm -hmm. had always been in bondage. Yes. That they were in bondage in Egypt. Mm -hmm. They were in bondage to the Assyrians. They were in bondage to the Babylonians. They were in bondage to the Medes, the Persians, the Assyrians, the Greek. And even at this time of the text, they were under a Roman regime. They were oppressed by the Romans. And yet their statement is... You don't have to make us free because we're already free. You'll never experience true freedom until you recognize that you're in bondage. Yes. The, the, these, these Jews believe that because they were Abraham's children, they had a special sense of freedom even though they were in captivity. Mm. But Jesus said, listen... Whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. Hmm. They were talking about physical bondage, which they were in, but Jesus was talking about spiritual bondage. And Jesus said, just because you are the biological descendants of Abraham, it does not mean you are the spiritual children of God. Huh. True freedom cannot be realized until bondage is recognized. Hmm. And many of us don't press, pursue, or practice freedom because we don't even know we're in bondage. Mm, Lord help. Satan gives us just enough liberty hmm. in our bondage to make us think that we're free. Hmm. He gives us just enough wiggle room in our sin to make us think that we're in control. He gives us just enough light and darkness so that we think that we can see. He gives us just enough wisdom to make us think we know what we're doing. But Jesus said the whole time we are living in bondage because we're slaves to sin. Mm. We're not free if we're living contrary to the righteous standards of a holy God. Yes. We're not free if we disregard and disobey the principles of God. 
We're not free if we don't recognize our, our tendencies, our propensities, our proclivities to sin. We're not free if we don't recognize that we're all susceptible because we all have a sin nature. Jesus said, you're not free as long as you are a slave to sin. Hmm. And some of us don't even realize that we're a slave to sin. Yes. We won't pursue righteousness if we don't know we're in bondage. These Jews who were living under this Roman oppression, but more importantly, they were living under the oppression of sin, were standing right in front of the Savior. But because they didn't recognize their bondage, they didn't recognize the need for a Savior. And if you don't know you're in bondage today, you'll never recognize how much you really need a Savior. But I want to declare that when you look at the condition of the world, when you look at the people who are dying, when you look at the state of the political system in our nation, when you look at the condition of our community, all of us have to admit there is bondage in this world and we need to be freed from the bondage of sin. Yes. True freedom requires a connection to God's word. True freedom recognizes our bondage in sin. But lastly and finally, true freedom relies on a Savior. Mm. When you recognize that you're in bondage, you must also recognize that you need a Savior. Yes, thank you, Lord. Jesus argued for freedom from the lesser to the greater. Mm. He said... A slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. In comparing the relationship between a slave and a son, Jesus says that slaves are not guaranteed their place in a house. Hmm. Slaves can lose their employment. Slaves can be put out of the house. Yes. Slaves have no guarantee that they will be in the house forever. But a son, a child of the master, was at home in the house. Hmm. It was not a place of employment. It was a place of inheritance. Yes. The, 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 the son was in the house because he was born, watch this, to one they own the house. Hmm. The slave was in the house. Because he worked for the person who owned the house. But he would never own the house himself. But a son was guaranteed that as long as the blood was in his veins, he had a place in the house. Yes. You, you remember the story of the prodigal son. When the prodigal son came back, he said, I'll make myself a servant in my father's house. But his father said, no, no, no. Put the ring on his finger. Yes. Put slippers on his feet. Put a robe on his shoulders because you can't be a servant in a place where you're a son. God help mm. me here tonight. He said, you have a permanent part of the family. I don't care where you've been. Yes. I don't care how long you've been gone. You have a permanent part in the family that does not change. A son and a servant have different roles yes. in the house. Thank you, Lord. Mm. You and I have been made a permanent part of the family mm. because the son has made us sons and daughters. Yes. When, and, and when the son makes you a permanent part of the family, you are free indeed. Mm. That means there's no question of your right to be in the house. Yes. It, it means that your name has been added to the wheel. It means that you that your share of the inheritance has been secured. It means that you get to eat from the family table. Huh. William McDonald says when a person comes to the Savior and receives eternal life from him, that person is free from the slavery of sin, legalism, superstition, and demonism. You are free from the guilt of your past mistakes. Hmm. Free from bad choices and ignorant decisions. Free from self-inflicted pain and 
undeserved abuse and unwarranted cruelty. When the Son has set you free, you are free indeed. Paul said in Galatians chapter 5 verse 1, Stand fast therefore in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. When Christ has made you free, you are free, as the young people say, for real, for real. <laughs> How does the Son make us free? Well, according to the written word of God, the living word, Jesus Christ, hmm. made us free by putting on humanity. He, was, he made us free by being born of a virgin. Hmm. He lived a perfect life died a substitutionary death, experienced a victorious resurrection, and assumed his divine place at the right hand of the Father, and one day he'll come again to receive his church. And that's how you and I experience true freedom. It's not by your education. Yes. It's not by your money. It's not by your might and not by your power. It's by the Spirit of God that you and I have experienced true freedom. You and I are free indeed because yes. Jesus Christ paid it all. Yes, he you. paid the price on the cross yes. to redeem us from the hand of the enemy huh. and present us as faultless before the Father, the only true and living God. As I close, there's a story of a seal, a baby seal who was who was caught up in fishing line and, and fishing nets. Little seal was sick and, and it didn't look like it was going to make it, but it was rescued by an animal rescue agency. Those, those doctors took that little seal and they worked on that little seal. They nursed that little seal back to health to the point to where the seal was ready to be released back into the wild. They took the seal out on the boat into the open waters of the sea and they opened its cage and they coaxed the seal to jump out of the boat and into the ocean. Hmm. That little seal was overwhelmed by the enormity of the sea. He looked out and, and he saw all of this open water, all of this freedom and, and literally the seal was afraid of all this freedom. He, he grew up swimming in a little pool. He Grew up in a confined space. He grew up in a space where he could touch the sides and he could touch the bottom. But now he was let free in the ocean mm -hmm. and he couldn't, he didn't know what to do with all this newfound freedom. Huh. And so as much as they tried to make him get out of the boat, he wanted to stay in the boat. And mm -hmm. even when they pushed him out of the boat, the little seal kept trying to jump back in the boat. And even when the boat started to go back to shore, the little seal swam beside the boat, trying to get back where he was, where he felt safe and comfortable. Something happened. He heard something off in the distance. And the little seal looked and he saw some other seals that looked just like him. <laughs> they were out in the middle of the ocean. They were playing and swimming and eating and enjoying the freedom. And it was then that he realized that he wasn't created to be on a boat. Huh. He wasn't created to be in a cage. And he wasn't created to swim in a little bitty pool. This seal realized when he saw other seals being free that he was created for the freedom of the ocean. Yes. Come here, little seal. Let me tell you, I'm talking to somebody here this morning. You weren't created for the box that you've been living in. Yes. You weren't created for the box that society has put you in. You weren't created for the box of your own mind. You were created huh. Huh. to be free because the sun has set you free. Yes. And when the sun set you free, you can't keep trying to jump back into the boat of huh. your own sin. You can't go back to where Jesus has delivered you from. But if he has made you free, you are free indeed. So go on and enjoy your freedom. Yes. Go on and enjoy the liberty that Jesus has gave you. Go on and be what he's created you to be. Go on and do what he's created you to do. Yes. You can't go back to where you came from because you have been set free and anything 
other than the freedom of Jesus is too small for his children. There is liberty in Jesus. There's freedom in Jesus. There's joy in Jesus. There's peace in Jesus. There's love in Jesus. There's salvation in Jesus. There's redemption in Jesus. He who has been set free by the Son is no longer in bondage. Jesus has set you free. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are no longer bound to sin. He who the Son has set free hmm. is free indeed. Let's go to God in prayer. Lord God, we thank you that you have set us free. Yes, Lord. We thank you that we are no longer bound by sin. Mm -hmm. That we are free from sin. Free from the slavery of our past. Mm -hmm. We are living liberated lives in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we pray now that if there is anyone who is still bound, anyone who is still in captivity, we pray right now that they would accept your word that says that if they abide in you, if they abide in your word, if they stay connected to you, and if they give their life to you, there is no more bondage. Lord, we still struggle with sin. Yes, Lord. We still battle sin. We still fight through sin, but we're not slaves to sin. Uh. Sin has no dominion in our lives. Sin cannot control us. Sin does not tell us what to do. But Lord, we are slaves now to a greater master. Mm -hmm. We are slaves to the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. We are servants of the Most High, only God. And Lord, you have set us free, and we accept that freedom today because of who you are and what you've done. Father, free your people. Yes, Lord. Free our minds. Yes. Free our lives. Free our hearts that we can walk in your freedom. We can experience your joy, that we can feel your presence, and we can live in your glory. This is our prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. We thank you for joining us today, and we are so grateful, just so overwhelmingly grateful that Jesus Christ has made us free. Yes. So many of us are living in cages with open doors. Amen. We've been free. The lock has been removed. There's nobody watching. But we're so used to our cage, we won't even step out of the door. Hmm. Now, I'm encouraging you today. Don't live in what's always been keeping you. Break free from the captivity of your own mind. Because if you're saved today, Jesus has set you free. Now, if you don't know Jesus today, that's not your story. If that's not your reality, this is a great day to give your life to Christ. Amen. You can experience this freedom. You can experience what God has done for all of us. And that is extended eternal life and extended present true freedom. You can walk in liberty. You can walk out of your addiction. You can walk out of your toxic relationships. You can walk out of your self-deprecating life. You can walk out of debt. You can walk out of all of, the, all, all of those things if you give your life to Jesus Christ. Amen. Today is your day. You don't have to stay in the shape that you're in. Hmm. Jesus has given us freedom. and We thank God for that. Listen. Uh, this Wednesday, we won't be having Bible study. Uh, we invite you to take some time off, uh, give thanks to God, uh, spend some time with your family, not too much, uh, too much family, but spend some time with your family. Um, and so we won't be on Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, next week, we'll be right back here virtually for our worship service. Uh, don't forget, we have uh, Thanksgiving baskets that we are putting together tomorrow. Get with your deacons uh, to, to talk.
talk about that too. If you want to help, you want to give, get with your deacons to let them know uh, what you have to give, that you're ready to give. And um, let me say thank you to all of those who volunteer, uh, who, are, who have in mind to come and help with that. Uh, I'm grateful and thankful to God uh, that you guys have taken the leadership on that and that we are going forward and doing that. Let me say a special thank you to one of our uh, distant members, uh, Mr. Johnny Rolfe. Uh, Mr. Rolfe has been so instrumental in all that we've done, the school supplies, uh, our church sanitation efforts. Uh, every time we ask for something, he is more than gracious Amen. Uh, to give. And he has given substantially, hmm. I mean substantially, Thank you, to Lord. our Thanksgiving basket uh, distribution. And so we say thank you yes. to Mr. Rofe. He's a member uh, of our church and he does not live here, but he's still blessing and giving. And that's the heart of giving. Yes. Uh, even if you are not going to benefit, uh, God has still called us to give. So I know he, he probably wouldn't want me to mention his name, but I want to mention him and his wife. They are so generous, so gracious, so willing, and so upfront in giving. I want to recognize him and his efforts to give and bless our church family mm -hmm. and our community. Yes. So thank you uh, for all of you who gave, but I want to give a special thanks to him because he didn't have to. So uh, continue to be safe, continue to be uh, careful, continue to take our precautions. God is in the healing business, but we don't have to play with God. Amen. Uh, he has given us enough wisdom to be smart enough to do the right thing. Uh, and so that's what we're going to do. We're going to follow the direction of wherever you're watching. Follow the direction of local government. And then take your own precautions to make sure you're safe and sound. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now may the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth, now and forevermore. Let every heart say, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. We love you, and we ask that God come. God bless you.